Over the next two days, I'll be at Energylandia in Poland, the coaster capital of Europe, with a whopping 19 roller coasters. I'll be checking out the brand new Sweet Valley Land and taking you for a ride on some of the best attractions, including Zadra, Hyperion, and Abyssus. So let's drop in to Energylandia. Good morning from Energylandia. It is a lovely day here. It is quite busy too, but this is such a big park that everyone kind of spreads out anyway. But yeah, super hyped to be back here at one of Europe's biggest theme parks. We've now got 19 roller coasters, which is bonkers. So I'm gonna to attempt to get on all of them over the next two days, even the really bad ones. So the front section of Energylandia is quite strange. It's very fairground. With some very odd, IP infringing theming. This is like if you ordered the um, the Madagascar section from Motion Gate Dubai on Wish. It's all so random through here. But this is quite nice though. Look, you do get in amongst the weird theming, you do get some nice little bits of landscaping. And then they were like, yeah, let's just have a pyramid because why not? Obviously, it has links to this dragon here and a booster, which I believe has a spacey robot theme and then space gun. Yeah. Yeah, the weird mix of Egyptian theming in with loads of futuristic stuff and then a character from Cars. It's so odd, the random thrown together theming. Now we've got some seats from Paris what's happening now one thing i do intend to show you while i'm here is probably the most incredible world-class dark ride you'll ever see and that's monster house i'll come to that later because it deserves all the build-up and hype possible and in front of you here is moya formula they're racing themed for coma that's actually really, really good fun and quite powerful little coaster, that one. But we will come to that one shortly because we need to go. There it goes. But yeah, time to go under the road because that's the sort of scale of Energy Landy here. You have to go underneath a road to get to another part of the park. So they're not actually advertising Sweet Valley on their board up there yet. And here is Sweet Valley, the newest area here at Energylandia. This is only opened three days ago. So let's go check it out. So Choco Chip Mining Co is their Vekoma mine train. I will come to that shortly because that is sort of the main attraction here, but we're gonna have lots of eateries. It's all very bright and colorful, isn't it? Then up in front of us here is the Candy Carousel. It's also bright and colorful. My only concern would be whether or not they can keep all this color up or whether it will fade over time. Especially when you get weather like this, they look good, don't they? Oh, maybe have some shakes later. I'm just walking around here and gathering ideas for food. I'm gonna be stuffed. And there's Honey Harbour. So this is the second roller coaster. Also Vekoma, I believe, because this is basically Vekoma land here at Energylandia. So heading into Choco Chip Mining Co. Energy Land is new Vekoma mine train. Quite like all the rock work and stuff in here though. They have made it feel like it is a, a mining company that I guess mines for chocolate chips. down into the mines. Oh, uh oh. Oh, 
Well, that was a bit random. I wasn't expecting a sort of lift pre-show. Choco Chip Mine Chain was a really solid family coaster. At the back, all of the drops sort of yeeted you out of your seat, but then because it's not a full drop, you sort of go down and then bank around. You sort of just got a little bit of air and then was back down and sort of shuffled down again. The helices were really, really forceful though in places. I did notice there was a little bit of a shuffle on the train at the back, and there is a lot of incomplete theming elements as well, which is slightly disappointing to see. On the whole, really long coaster, really enjoyable, great for families. I think that's a really solid addition. It's different to anything else here, really, which is a hard thing to do when you've got so many Vacoma roller coasters. So, yeah, that was decent. See so, you what, well, now all the uh, food spots have opened. It smells so sweet around here now. It is, uh, it's very tempting to grab a bite to eat, but Honey Harbour first, because we've got two coasters to do. So heading into the queue for Honey Harbour, and this is another Vacoma kind of mine train type ride, but a much smaller one. Well, apparently Honey Harbour includes a seal who gorges on honey, and there's a little alcove down there. How random. I like the colour of this track though, sort of a turquoisey colour. Well, Honey Harbour was a pleasant surprise. You may have heard my reaction on the POV there. At the back, you really get pulled over that drop. And the first helix as well is really, really powerful. I was quite surprised by that because it looks like a really small coaster. Obviously, it's a small layout. It, it goes around twice, two lap special, uh, just to maximize your experience. It also means you get to experience that drop twice, which is really cool. But yeah, it is all about that first bit after that. It's a meandering family coaster. But yeah, surprisingly impressed by how forceful that is. So. Mm, yeah, recommend that. And check out this funky phone box.
donuts, donuts everywhere. It's also really warm and stuffy in here. So these donuts I'd imagine would be quite unpleasant to eat. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna get a shake because they look really, really good. Well, look at this bad boy. I got myself a cream shake in the end. This came to 26 lottie, which is about a fiver, just over a fiver. Uh, looks pretty damn tasty though. So a brief look around Sweet Valley there. If you'd like a more in-depth look, I have recorded a full walk around tour, which is up on the channel now. And well, the logical next step from Sweet Valley is Smogsigrod, the area made famous by Zadra, one of Europe's finest roller coasters, one of our only, well, one of only three RMCs we have here in Europe. And in fact, this whole area of Smogsigrod is, uh, is really nicely put together. Proper medieval dragon village vibes. I mean, it's so nice here, that guy's come on holiday. Of course, the legendary family bucket of chicken. Probably a bit too much for me today, but their food in this section of the park, very, very reasonable normally. But yeah, it is a lovely section this is. and into the very reasonable 10 minute queue line we go. Now the park is quite busy today, but everything's so big and spread out here that uh, the queues don't seem to pick up massive lines. And even Choco Chick Creek over in Sweet Valley, that picked up a 20 minute line, but that was only on one train, so they stuck another train on. And there it goes. Up round into that massive turnaround, a huge airtime hill which yeets you at the back. And now one of the best inversions in the world, the zero G stall. Huge upside down airtime there. Oh, I can't wait to get back on this. <laughs> oh, well, that was a proper fierce ride near the back of Zadra. They couldn't quite get back row. I was beaten to it, but man, that's so much fun. I tell you what, in this weather, it is absolutely hauling around that track. The big airtime hill, which usually gives you a little bit of floater. That was full blown, like four seconds out of a seat that time. Uh, yeah, really hauling around. The pacing on that's fantastic. The zero G still was awesome. The drop's great. The first airtime hill was great. That little switch up banked hill towards the end. That's such a good roller coaster. I'm not sure if it quite cracks my top five, but it is right on the edge. Yeah, if you can get over here to ride Zadra, I mean, obviously you've got four really big coasters here at Energy Land here, but that, that's the one. So while I'm here, I'm going to ride Draken, a little family coaster, but I've never ridden this before, so it's a new cred.
I think Draken is the sort of ride that you file under a cred's a cred. Uh, and while riding it, I was trying to figure out exactly who manufactured it, because it was kind of weird. I was sort of thinking, well, it makes sense between Vacoma, because they have so many Vacoma family coasters here, but the restraints were very un -Vacoma. It had a track that kind of was a bit Zera, so I did wonder maybe it's a Zera. Actually, random company called Preston and Balbieri. Never heard of them before, and that rode very averagely. So now heading into Aqualantis, home to the big Vacoma Shockwave Abyssus, uh, Ekaba Like Explorers as well, but it was a little unfinished when I came here a couple of years ago. So since then I've added in a few more bits of theming, so it'll be really interesting to see how this is looking now, because this is one of the nicest areas of the park, and they've got a couple of decent coasters. Oh, I love it when parks have these on hot days. So heading into the queue line for Abyssus, this huge Vacoma. I love this entrance way as well. Really cool as you enter in, in between the bat wing here. A back row ride there on Abyssus, still a really good roller coaster, one of my favourites here. I think Vekoma did a really good job with that. It's not perfect, it's not this thrill a minute kind of ride, but it does a lot of things really well. Has picked up a little bit of a vibration at the back now, however, I think um, the first section, which people tend to slag off, I think there's some really nice airtime there at the back. Uh, the second launch is punchy, the top hat's decent until you hit them trims on the drop, which are a bit of a buzzkill. But then that loop and the dive under the station is fantastic. I love the bat wing. Yeah, there's some really nice moments of airtime here. That launch is fun, like, as you saw behind me there. Yeah, I definitely recommend Abyssus. And it does seem to get one of the biggest queues here, so it's clearly still very popular. The sloth there covering the penguin's eyes. What's he protecting him from? <laughs> so while I'm up here, I'm gonna do Ekapa Light Explorers. <laughs> Back row on Ekapa Light Explorers. One of two Vekoma boomerangs here at Energylandia. This is the better of the two though. And it's all above water.
I think Ekip is one of the better family boomerangs from Vekoma. I love that it's got a more sprawling layout instead of a really compact one like they normally do. The fact that it's all over water really helps. It's quite an aesthetically enjoyable ride to be on. So yeah, I'd love to see more sort of sprawling boomerangs like that. Well, having spent around four hours a day in this back section of the park, I think it's time to explore a bit more of Energylandia. So I grabbed a chicken kebab. Ooh. Oh, got it. We went then. So I grabbed a chicken kebab and a coke, which cost around 51 lotti, which is about a tenner, not too bad. And now I'm getting in the uh, in the queue for Anaconda, which is their big tidal wave type attraction because it is full-blown 3 p.m. heat business right now, and I feel like getting a little bit wet. So let's go and get a soaking. <laughs> Wet times! Whoa! Ah! Woo! Woo! That wasn't too bad, but that was only the first drop. Oh, you are soaked, aren't you? Let me just dry you off there. Bless. Oh. Oh. Well, that was not bad at all. I got a sprayed arm. Station's quite cool, don't it? Anaconda did pretty much what I expected, except the first drop was way more of a drencher than the second drop, which barely did anything. It was a light spraying at best, but it's cooled me down a bit, just in time to ride one of the worst roller coasters here, which I didn't have the balls to do last time because I wanted to focus on other things. But this is a spinning wild mouse with over the shoulder restraints. Why? And why am I going to put myself through this? Well, because hopefully you'll find my discomfort entertaining. Shout out to this massive dragon though. That's quite cool. Well, let's see how bad this really is. Okay, that was awful. Legit one of the worst roller coasters I've ever ridden. In fact, I, I offer a heartfelt apology to you, director, right now, because that is an absolute beaut compared to this. Well, that abomination behind me may just be the worst roller coaster I've ever ridden. Whoever thought it'd be a good idea to put over the shoulder restraints on a family spinner has lost their mind. That was appalling. I feel like I've gone three rounds with Anthony Joshua. That was just. Don't ride that, it's awful. I suppose it's a cred. It's the world's smallest topspin. What is going on here? So also in this neck of the woods is Boomerang, which is unsurprisingly a Vekoma family boomerang. The second of the boomerangs here, of course, Ekipa I rode earlier. This is more of a standard layout, but while we're here, we may as well do it. And then it's down to the front for some Hyperion and speed action. That station fly through is quite cool though.
boomerang felt like it was running fairly quickly there. It certainly felt a bit more forceful than last time I rode it. That section, as you zoom over the station there, is really cool. Um, yeah, a couple of weird forceful moments on that, which you certainly didn't get on Accelerator at Drayton Manor last week. So, not sure what's going on there, whether it's just the heat, 26 degrees today, whether, whether that's kind of just warmed the tracks and the wheels and stuff up, so it's zooming around a little bit quicker, but yeah, that was really solid. Oh, this is quite a cute queue line, isn't it? Although it does remind me of a very weird German video my friend recorded off a weird Sky Channel back in the 90s about these flower people. Very odd. section's quite weird but Energis was um that was fine perfectly decent family coaster kind of felt like the coma's take on the Zira Tivoli in many ways but yeah quite enjoyed that the first drop and helix was decent had a bit of force to it uh, also saw the Hyperion is running during that so I think that's where I'm gonna head next wanna come so it's now Pepsi Hyperion which sounds like a very bizarre drink um I mean now two Pepsi sponsored hypercoasters in existence. I know which one I prefer. What about you? A hint. I'm about to ride it. Well, Hyperion Thirst Quencher Deluxe brought to you by Pepsi is um, it's still a really, really, really good, powerful, forceful coaster. Some massive airtime on the drop and over the hills. The turnaround is pretty mental. Those wave turns as well really swing you out to the side of the seat. And there's a couple of nice little air hills at, towards the end there as you stay low towards the ground. The outside seats do bounce a little bit though. Also, my GoPro ran out of battery halfway up the lift hill, so you didn't get the POV that time, but I'll be back here tomorrow, which will, for you, be slightly later in this video, maybe even in about 10 minutes time. Also worth noting they have a water park here, which is included in the entry. On a day like today, I kind of wish I had trunks with me because it is the perfect weather for it. But certainly worth considering if you come on a nice summer's day like this. This is Eric the Elephant, and he's been balancing that ball in his trunk for 15 hours. So I think the least he can do is give the video a like out of respect. So that absolutely mental lift there is next on the list, I think. Speed, which is a massive Intamin water coaster. Kind of the last of the heavy hitters today to do, apart from Formula. Um, I suppose technically my if you class an SLC as a heavy hitter, which, I mean, it certainly hits you heavily. But as speed is kind of right in the middle of the park here. I think I might make this the last ride of the day if I can figure out how to get to the entrance. I remember this being a bit of a pain last time, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, this part of the park, you just get led down dead ends and off to weird random bits like here. I mean, what's this supposed to represent? It's like a roundabout of foliage surrounded by trees that are, I don't know, some of them look like they've been sick. That one looks like he's just shouting at bears or something. This guy's obviously been telling porkies because his nose is massive. Don't get it. I don't get what this is about. Can someone explain? Rapid action here. It's 
So I might not have explained the locker situation clearly. So the wristband allows you to basically keep reusing lockers throughout the day. You just scan the wristband, dump your stuff in, uh, then take it out, and that allows you to use reuse the lockers at another ride. So read the band on the scanner. Allocate a locker. That's giving me 488. Where are you at? Easy as that. And now I'm wet again. Alex, what did you think of speed? Well, you haven't ridden it, have you? Because you're a statuesque lion. Sort it out, mate. Um, yeah, it's fine, it's good. Um, it's obviously really tall. I don't think you really feel the height on that because the drop's quite gradual. It's not a very steep descent. Um, you don't necessarily get the full feeling from it. But if you're sitting midway into the train like I was, you do get bloody soaked. So the first sort of, I say it's the, it's the big drop technically, but it only kind of skims the water. Um, I got hit directly just in the face there with a jet of water, which was lovely. And then got my legs and torso completely drenched on the main splashdown. So seeing as nearly all of my camera batteries have run out and there's only about half hour to go left here anyway, I think I'm going to head back to my hotel, call it a day for day one. And I'll be back in literally seconds in your time, probably wearing something different, unless I'm feeling particularly scummy, and uh, be back here for day two. Well, good morning. It's day two at Energyland here. I'm back here at the park, bright and early. It's not quite opened yet. They're gonna have some sort of little show that they do before they let people in. They're currently playing the most annoying theme park earworm there is, which is the Energylandia theme tune. Didn't hear it too much yesterday, thankfully, but it does just embed in your brain until it drives you slightly mad. So I'll try and uh, not give you too much of that today, but let's head into the park for more Energylandia fun. So just waiting for the rope drop. Got a couple of minutes to go, and then this lot's just gonna flood into the park. And here we go. So I think the plan of action is to head to the back of the park again. Start with formula, because I didn't do that yesterday, and that does tend to build a bit of a line. And then obviously just smash Abyssus and Zadra multiple times, because they're both great, particularly Zadra, which is one of the best coasters in Europe. So sounds like a bit of a plan, doesn't it? Let's head in that direction. Does Energy Landia get your seal of approval? So a big part of today's visit will be getting on Monster House as well, but uh, it's a ride of such overwhelming quality that I'm going to leave that until later. Um, I just don't think you're quite ready for it yet. I guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. So in the line for Formula, hopefully this should be basically a walk and quite a few people have, have jumped in it as well, but it was showing a naught minute queue. So. so this is a Vekoma launch coaster. Three inversions, quite a compact layout, but it is very punchy. I certainly think we could benefit from one of these in the UK. I think certainly some of the smaller parks, a Flamingo Land or a Drayton Manor, I know they're heading at a more family audience, but uh, I certainly think some of the smaller parks could really benefit from one of these. I don't think it's quite at the sort of cost level as a major B&M or an Intamin or something like that.
now and fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> Yeah, formula behind me there is a really good coaster. It's very compact, it is very short, but you know what? The launch is snappy, the inversions all really deliver. There's airtime over the hills, there's whip around the bends. So like every element does exactly what it needs to do and you can't really ask for more than that. So yeah, formula, very, very good. And heading back into Smoxigrod for some rides on Zadra. Look at it go. It is, I think, the best ride here. Well, Formula has just jumped to a 20 minute queue, so definitely the right thing to knock that off first. While Zadra is currently sat on zero minutes. I'm not sure that's gonna be entirely accurate because I have a feeling a few people will have headed there because um, why wouldn't you? Oh look, it's Merlin's Wonderland. I wonder if they serve Aramark food. And here we go into the longest queue line of all time for one of the best roller coasters in Europe. What's this guy saying? You should like the video, man. That's a typical night accent, by the way, because they all spoke like that. Zadra just smacks, doesn't it? It's just fierce all the way around. Relentless, great pacing, zero G stalls, amazing. Drop does the job, the airtime hill does the job, and it just feels like it's running so raw right now. I noticed it yesterday as well, it felt a lot more fierce than it did a couple of years ago. Yeah, love it. Top tier coaster that is. So I'm gonna go straight back around for round two. Unfortunately, the gate was closed, so I'm gonna have to walk around 14 miles to get there, but uh, probably worth it, because Zadra is hench. Oh, Zadra's a beefy boy. I do really like that roller coaster. Did queue for front row there, but uh, they're running one train, so it was gonna probably take about half an hour to get through that queue, so I hopped across, ended up in the second back row again. We are going to head into Aqualantis now. Uh, actually, you know what? We're not gonna do that. We're gonna ride Frida because it's right here and we might as well. So come on, let's go and ride a purple roller coaster. So one thing I rate about Energy Landy, you may notice all the ride signs have a number next to them and that's the key on the map. So it makes it really easy to identify what coast you're searching for on the map and then find it in real life. I think that's quite a cool little touch. But anyway, let's head for Frida. So this is one of the 76 Vekoma family coasters here at Energylandia. It does a two lap special. Well, in terms of the catalogue of the Coma family coasters here at Energylandia, I think Frida is one of the weaker ones. As with all of them, you do get a really nice drop off the hill, especially sat at the back, but there's not a great deal else to it. There's a couple of helices, which are fine, but yeah, this is not anything particularly special. I think Energist that I rode yesterday, probably the better of them. Equipa Light Explorers as well, a really good boomerang, but 
they do get very similar after a while these vacomas and uh yeah i think energy land they could do with maybe dialing down a few of them and maybe looking at some other manufacturers for some of their future attractions i'm not sure that's going to happen though and here's a zamperla disco you don't see these every day I sometimes worry if my dry sarcasm comes over on camera or whether people just generally don't think I've ridden a Zamperla disco before. So heading into the line for round two on Abyssus. Uh, I've got to say, the park does feel slightly quieter than it did yesterday. It was a bit chaotic around the front this morning, but uh, certainly the crowds yesterday seemed a lot higher than it is currently, but we'll see how it gets on. So hopefully this queue will be closer to the station than yesterday so I did kind of get a bit sunburned stood out in this. Fingers crossed. Regular min, but when you don't quite fancy a large intermin. So I've been back to the abyss, seen some weird little sea aliens and ridden a roller coaster. And Abyssus is, is, is a solid roller coaster really. It's, uh, it's not the strongest here. It's quite a distant third behind Zadra and Hyperion, I think. But I th it does demonstrate that Vekoma can do some really cool stuff. But like I said yesterday, it has some nice bumps of air time. The inversions are mostly decent. It's that trim over the top hat is problematic. And I have a bit of a question for you. Which is worse, trims or stapling? Comment below. Quite a vibe around here on the water though, isn't it? It's uh, Now they've sort of completed Aqualantis and finished off all the rock work theming, it's a much nicer place to just chill out in and uh, a very nice section of the park. Well, it's been a coaster heavy morning so far, so let's do the Aqualantis Grotto Expedition, which is a nice genteel little boat ride. It gives some nice views of Echo Light Explorers as well. There are just so many roller coasters and rides around me, you don't really know where to look. But it's awesome how this interacts with Echo the Light Explorers. I mean, that comes, look how close the track is here. It literally comes within about two feet of the roof of this boat. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of Energylandia. They do just cram in ride after ride after ride. Don't get me wrong, there are parts of the park where it does feel like a bit of a scattergun approach has been used to just throw rides in anywhere with some very odd and often irrational theming. But in this back section of the park where they've kind of had a more focused approach, you do notice it and it's a, it's a nice vibe, it's enjoyable. You can just hang out here and the best theme parks do that. They offer you a place where even if you're not riding, you can just enjoy wandering around, experiencing the park, the atmosphere, and genteel little boat rides like this. Hello there, sir. What a nice genteel boat ride. I love the views you get of all the various rides around you on the water there. Yeah, it's a nice change of pace. Speaking of change of pace, this is how they get around the park here at Energylandia. So I found myself back in Sweet Valley. I'll have a quick wander around here again, see what the queue times are for the two coasters, because I quite enjoy both of them, so I'd happily get on one of them again. I like this colourful selection of chairs here. In fact, everything here is super colourful. A balloon man here. See all kinds of weird activities going down here. Got a bit of tic tac toe or noughts and crosses, depending on where in the world you're from. Well, Choco Chip Creek appears to have a noughts minute queue, so I'm going to go and do that and then I'm going to head towards the front of the park. Maybe stop off at Monster House on the way. Been building up to just the, the most legendary dark ride of all time across my two days here. And then obviously Hyperion. The lift pre show is a bit odd because it clearly takes you down underground but then you end up above ground for the ride station. 
So a third and probably final run through on Choco Chip Creek there. And it's a very good mine train, you know, it's up there with some of the best mine train style coasters in the world. But it is a real shame that they couldn't get that theming completed in time for opening. Because you do have two big structures of just steel rods and it's, uh, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing to look at. Especially as you imagine, it's just more of the Choco Chip rock work that they've got dotted around other parts of the ride. So I guess their supplier had some issues or something like that. But um, yeah, it is a shame because it's the one thing that sort of detracts from it. But otherwise, it's a really good mine train. I think that last drop is by far the fiercest. It does have a little bit of a shuffle at the back, which is a bit of a concern for a coaster that's so new. But otherwise, I, I quite enjoyed it. I think it's a good addition. Now, of course, there is also mine over there, which is the SLC. Uh, I should probably ride that as well. It's probably not going to be as uncomfortable as Viking was yesterday, but it's still an SLC, which does fill me with trepidation. Well, I'm a glutton for punishment, so I'm heading into the Mayan queue line. It's only a 10 minute wait, so why not, eh? is a fairly terrible roller coaster made slightly less terrible by having vest restraints instead of hard over the shoulder restraints but yeah those those layouts are just no fun at all really um slightly forceful in places but not enough to warrant the sort of being banged around and all that sort of stuff so yeah this feels like it almost feels a bit out of place here because it's all the other thrill coasters are generally of a pretty high standard and then they've got a vacoma slc Oh God, I'm having flashbacks to yesterday. I feel sorry for these people, but they're putting themselves through this. See, this bit's fine. It's when you get to this first drop, this is where it really starts to go downhill. There you go, big jerk around the corner. Oh, those corners are so janky. And again here, they are holding on for dear life. <laughs> Well, there's an incredibly tall woman here. <laughs> Skills. So RMF Dragon here is a Vekoma suspended family coaster. Has exactly the same layout as Flight of the Pterosaur at Portons Park and a few others. Unfortunately, it is on a 30 minute queue, so I'm gonna give that one a miss today. I have ridden it before, but. And now probably the biggest surprise of the day is that Monster House Party, one of the best dark rides in the world, only has a 10 minute queue. I mean, you usually expect this to have at least an hour for its kind of forbidden journey, rise of the resistance level theming. Now, if you haven't detected my sarcasm, I'm not being entirely serious. This is one of the most hilariously bad dark rides I've ever ridden. And I feel the need to share it with you because this is just, it's so bad. Well, here we are inside Monster House. Another classic tale of IP infringement. I mean, that is just an alien from the film Alien. And there's another alien from the film Alien. I wonder if they paid for rights. Uh, my feeling is probably not. It's also so dark you can't really make out a lot. Which might not be a bad thing. But just to note that none of these are actual animatronics. Nothing moves. It is just still things that you sort of get glimpses of. Well, this guy's a robot. He's pointing his gun in a different direction to where he's looking. Oh, so a cage full of nothing. And we've got some uh, Marowaks up there. 
And that's it. And that's it. Well, Master House is legitimately one of the worst dark rides in the world. You can barely see anything. What you can see is mostly cheap plastic. There's loads of IP infringement in there. It is awful. And really, a park like Energylandia, I mean, it's a big park now. They must bring in a reasonable amount of money, like every other roller coaster has now got a partnership deal with some big company. So you'd imagine they could probably afford to sort of use that building for a much more effective dark ride. The fact that they're still running it, and for some bizarre reason, it picked up a 10 minute queue, which is probably longer than that, to be fair. I think they underestimated it slightly. It's so bad, so bad. So I'm heading in the direction of that big silver beast, Pepsi Hyperion, which still sounds horrible to say, but it is a very, very good hyper coaster. And I quite fancy another ride or two on that. And hopefully this time, my GoPro battery has got enough juice in it to actually take you on ride with me. So should we go and do a Hyperion? And there it goes, ascending the lift hill. It gets up there quick, doesn't it? Well, we have a naught minute queue. I don't believe it'll be naught minutes because there's always some chaos in the battery section. So I'm gonna go and dump all my stuff in one of these lockers. They do have metal detectors here, so just about everything needs to go in. I can get away with a GoPro though, so let's go do Hyperion. It's so random that they have all this theming and it's hidden right at the back of the lockers. Like you would have no reason to come down this end unless you're using the lockers up here. And most people will use the lockers all the way down there. Here we go, front row on Hyperion. Hands in the air crew. So a bit of double dipping on Hyperion there with two rides. On both occasions, I got really jammy in that you have a sort of batching system like I do on Zadra here where you sort of have four rows with uh, screens above that kind of say how many people can go through. And on both occasions, there was a one there, nobody in the queue. So I literally held up the one like I was in the bloodline and got let all the way through. So first time round as well, I was actually in the back section of the train, but the spare row Oh, sorry, the spare seat was actually on the front row. So I got a front row that I didn't key for and didn't have to wait for. Result. But yes, Hyperion is, I mean, it's a top tier hyper. Uh, I still think if we're talking European hyper coasters, Shambhala may just edge it out for me, but it's a really fun ride, really good. Lovely that they're not stapling the lap bars either, so you get loads of glorious airtime. So what is a bit odd is that they're only running one train, but yet sitting on the first row, uh, on the outer seat, it rode really nicely. Sitting in the second row in the outer seat, it really bounced in quite a few places, quite noticeably as well. So, not sure why it's doing that, but yeah, on the whole, 
Hyperion delivers tons of airtime, tons of power down the drops. That turnaround just whips you out of your seat. The wave turns are fun. It's a shame about that completely forceless airtime hill halfway through because you kind of feel like with Intamin and their air hills, that should be doing a lot more than it does. Also a bit of a shame that the splashdown is turned off, especially on a day like this where we could all do with a nice little spray. But you know, on the whole, love Hyperion, really good, but Zadra is better. So I have around two hours left now before I need to chip off to the airport and fly home. So my options are ride some off the shelf roller coasters, many of which are replicated in the UK, ride some flat rides that we have just about everywhere, or get some laps in on Zadra, which is a top tier RMC, of which we only have three in the entire continent of Europe. I think Zadra wins, doesn't it? Hi, I'm Darren Staines, and I think you should subscribe to the channel. So nobody seems to have noticed that the music has got jammed and it's just repeating the same note at 500 BPM. Sounds beautiful. So I was going to quickly ride Wonder Wheel before Zadra, just to get some fantastic views of the park, but uh, the queue's a little bit longer than I would like, but also it's a really hot day and they've taken away all of the shading that used to be in the queue line. So you can see the poles are still there, but nothing above it. The Zadra chain return geek shot. <laughs> Zadra is absolutely hauling around that course right now. Um, every element delivered, even the airtime here, which often doesn't proper have me out of the seat for three or four seconds. It's such a good roller coaster. And essential, I think. If you're a coaster enthusiast and you haven't come out here to ride Zadra, you are missing out because it is one of the best. It really is. Well, I finished my two day Energylandia binge with another ride on Zadra, and it is comfortably the best roller coaster here, I think. Even though Hyperion is also very, very good, Zadra just is a bit special. So I'm heading off now. I think my head is about as red as Ken's gi. Uh, the sun has certainly been beating down today, uh, so I'm quite looking forward to just chilling on the land train as I get back to my hotel, and I'll be driving back to the airport and flying back home. So. I would have loved an extra day or two here. Engelandia is a great place. It's huge, there's so much to do. But two days just about covers it. So listen, thank you so much for watching and sharing my experience out here in Poland. Uh, if you'd like to watch the full breakdown of Sweet Valley, that's up on the screen now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time here, Luke from Pipe Adventures.